Hey friends, it's Jake here. Yes, it's unboxing day. Uh, what is it? The 20th, Tuesday, the 20th of December when I'm recording this. Hopefully I'll get it edited in the next day or two. And I've got four knives I want to show you. I've got four more knives sitting over there that I'll show you hopefully before New Year's. We'll see. The knives that I want to show you today, this is an unboxing. I've already unboxed them. Uh, those of you who are aware, I buy most of my knives from the United States. I have them shipped to a friend in Nebraska. Family, friend, family, friend. You know, people that are related, but not super, super close. And they're my friends. There you go, family friends. And what Dave does is he takes the knives apart, mails me the handles, mails me the blades separately, and customs looks at them and doesn't know what to do with the stuff. You know, it charges me duty on it and then sends them on to me. And so then I get to reassemble them and show you what these are. So I have touched these already. So yeah, I don't know, maybe there'll be some fingerprints when I open them up on the blades already. So I've seen these already, so it's not my very first reaction on these knives, but it's an unboxing video. Yeah, is that okay? Is that fair? Hopefully that's good enough. They're all under 60 US dollars. Let me double check this. Yes, they're all under 60 US dollars, which is sort of the limit that I gave myself for 2022 of what I call budget below 60 US dollars. Just before we get to looking at them, I want to thank my financial supporters. You guys are awesome. I've got a couple new supporters very recently. Thank you very much for signing up to support the channel. If you're not aware, if you support the channel financially on a monthly basis, that's either through patreon.com slash cce, that's where you get started, or by clicking join below the video, then you get a chance to win a knife every single month and you get first dibs on all knife sales. And I am planning a knife sale in fairly early in January, maybe mid-January, somewhere around then. And, you know, all those guys, you know, 50, in the low 50s is the number of people. So you don't have an awful lot of competition to get the knife that you want. Also, you know, a little over 50 people, a 1 in 52, 53 chance of winning a knife every single month. You can't get better odds anywhere in the world for anything, can you? Eh, maybe you can. Probably not. <laughs> so that's the main benefits that I give to my financial supporters. Anybody who wants to, you can always send me an email, jake at canadiancuttingedge.com, and I will email you back. You know, if you want a conversation, you got a question about a knife, you got a problem, you got a challenge, you, know, you don't understand something or you just want to chat a little bit. I don't spend a lot of time just fraternizing on emails. You know, it's, I don't have that much time on my hands, but if you've got a question, I'm happy to answer it for you. So that's an awful lot of intro. Let's get to the tabletop and take a look at these four knives. The first knife is the Sencut Actium. So I got the Actium in purple and D2 steel. And uh, let's open this up here. Let's see this side. Is this side the un... Nope. This is the side that I had opened up. Now, what I really like about Send Cut is, you know, it is a Civivi budget brand. And so even on a low-cost knife, this thing, after discount at White Mountain Knives, which is where I bought all four of these knives, uh, you can save 10% at White Mountain Knives with coupon code CCE. And after you've saved your 10%, this is $38.70 US. That's a good deal. You get, you know, just like you do with Civivi, you get a nice pouch with that nice soft lining in it. And you get a microfiber cloth. I don't remember any stickers in there. Hopefully I didn't make a mistake on that. I forget to repack the stickers. But check this out. I like this purple. This is just nice. T8 screws. Yeah. Flipper. And it's got nice jimping all the way around it. You also have a thumb stud on this guy, which is quite nice. And a little bit of milling, extra milling on, you know, it's flat slab G10, but, you know, you've got big chamfers, extra little, you know, milled sections in there just to give a little bit open pillar construction. Lanyard hole back there, deep carry clip, that's right or left. And you want to see the blade, don't you? We've got this nice harpoon style blade. We've got, you know, a hollow grind in here, which I'm very happy with. I like a hollow grind got a forward choil that's actually big enough to use. You know, so many of these forward choils are not big enough to use. This is big enough to use without cutting yourself on the blade there. Nice swedge coming down to a tip. You've got full thickness up to about there where my fingernail is and then it tapers down so it's a somewhat delicate tip. But 
you know, the handle shape fits well in the hand like that. This might be my favorite sun cut yet. You know, I just had so much fun when I reassembled this and you played with it a little bit. Great lockup alignment. Not quite perfect, but that could have been me reassembling it in a hurry. And I'm a big fan of thumb studs. And, you know, flippers are okay, but I'm really a big fan of thumb studs. Only thing that would make this better, in my opinion, is if it had a good stainless steel. But, you know, some people say I'm hating on D2. I'm not hating on D2. D2 is a good steel for blades. I just don't prefer it on pocket knives. You know, it's sitting in a hot, sweaty pocket. It's carbon steel. But with this black wash finish, that will help protect that carbon steel as well. So this black and purple combination, I think is really, really cool. Like I said, $38.70 US for this knife. Yeah, and it does have, you know, skeletonizing and everything in there. Pretty nice, pretty nice indeed. Next, just a little bit more money, is the Kubi Hide. Oh, let's move that off to the side there, there we go. The Kubi Hide. Let's take a look at the label, if I can get it to focus there. There you go, the KU2104C. We've got 14C 28 end steel blade. We've got jade handle scales in uh, G10, and it's a smaller knife. So let's take a look at this. We've got a hole for deployment or an end flipper. Flat slab G10 does have a line milled in, you know, over there and back here all the way across. Again, T8 screws. You know, I had one person comment the other day, you know, that why don't I review knives that have T8 screws? Now, I do. You know, here's one. Uh, here's one. Here's another one. I've only got five knives on my table right now, and two of them are T8 screws. So, yeah. Actually, I've only got four knives on my table right now. <laughs> and half of them are T8 screws. Yeah, I like T8 screws a whole lot better. It does have T6 on the pocket clip, which, yeah, I don't prefer, but there it is. Right and left pocket clip. And let's try out this end flipper. Ta-da, look at that blade shape. We've got a nice drop point here. It's almost like a spear point kind of blade. We've got a flat grind. Doesn't come quite to the tip, uh, to the end, I should say. It says 14C28 end. There's a designer label that I've not seen before. This is Colin Maison Pierre. Um, you know, it's a French name. Yeah, the House of Pierre. I guess that's what the last name means. CM Designs, so quite nice. I don't like it on the be you know bevel here. I prefer it on the flat. We've got this nice section of flat up here. It would bring it further out, which I also don't like, but I wish that logo would have been put on the flats at least instead of on the main bevel. But we've got another stone wash. This one is a little bit lighter. Maybe you can see that. Let's see if I can bring this a little closer up. There you go. You can see it's not quite as dark as on the Sen cut, but it's you know a nice black wash. And yeah, I like black wash, 14C28N. We've got this big sharpness choil, but it's useless as a forward choil because it's not very comfortable there. And you're constantly, at least I am, putting that sharp edge on the edge of my finger. And that's not good. You can see my finger here, it's been chewed up enough. It doesn't want to get chewed up anymore. To be fair, this was not from a sharpness choil. I mean, a forward choil. That was from me and I sliced my finger this way. A nice big disc right between these two knuckles. I removed most of that. And uh, yeah, that was a few years ago. Anyhow, liner lock. Lockup's pretty nice right there. Lock release. It's not the super easiest to get at, but you can use the hole to flip it back out again. The detent's pretty nice. And uh, there you go. Oh, I don't have my measuring tape handy. Is this under three inches? The answer will be on the screen, maybe down here or up there. And if I measure it, I'm measuring from the tip of the blade to the closest spot on the handle. Is that distance under three inches? We'll see. Again, open pillar construction, and we've got skeletonizing, and uh, feels pretty nice in hand. I'm, yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Kubi has been doing a lot of good knives for a while. They've got a whole series of knives 
at $40. That's before discount. They tend to be D2 steel at $40. Uh, like I said, this was 14C28N, and this guy is $50.40. So 50 US bucks for this knife. So put him back over there. Next, one of my favorite companies. This is the QSP Osprey. Now the Osprey is one of those knives that comes in a load of different ways. You can get it with uh, as a frame lock with brass or copper handle scales. And um, 14C28N, have a knife day, kind of cool. Um, and uh, you can get it with this micarta and 14C28N. You can get it in an XL size, a bigger size. That one's got D2 steel. Uh, the XL one is, after discount, $62.99. This guy is $48.15 after discount. Uh, the brown micarta, that guy is only $37.80 after discount at White Mountain Knives right now. Uh, they've got these cool carbon fiber that have colors mixed in, uh, variants of these. $53.55. That's not bad at all. That's pretty good. And... Uh, the brass and copper ones, forty-three twenty uh, for cop for brass and forty-five dollars for copper. You can't get a better deal than that. I, well, maybe you can, but that's a really good deal. It's hard to get a better deal than that. We've got flat slab micarta. This is like a denim micarta. We do have T6 screws here, but these are some high-end uh, steel. It's not just soft steel. I don't prefer that they use T6 on their screws. Uh, this one's T8, I think, up here on the uh, pivot. But at least they use high quality screws. And uh, these screws, though, still a little bit dirty. These, um, Dave uses drive grip when he takes knives apart so that it lowers the chances of stripping anything out, especially on T6 heads. And I guess I just didn't clean that out quite enough. So that looks a little dirty. That's on me, not on QSP. Uh, they are very, you know, it's good high quality stainless steel screws. We've got their flipper and their blade. It's almost a straight back. It's got a little bit of a drop to it. A nice belly there. Very good EDC style blade. You can almost call it a full flat grind. We do have a flat section across here for most of the way, but uh, nice blade. A little bit shiny. I'd prefer stone wash, but hey, it's, it's a nice blade shape for just doing a lot of work. You know, it's not dramatic, you know, like a harpoon style blade, but it's a very effective blade for a lot of things, you know. And I like this blue micarta. It just feels nice. Good lockup position right there. Uh, slightly off, but very good alignment right there two-sided wire clip, inset lanyard hole back here, and that's also micarta. So very nice. I love this Osprey for the price. Now maybe I wish they would have skeletonized a little bit. The balance point is right there, and I think if they would have skeletonized it a little bit, the balance point could be a little further this way, but uh, it's not skeletonized. But the Osprey, there you go. Good size knife. I like that. And finally, what do we got? We've got something from Damned Designs. This is the Invictus. And now the Damned Designs. So there you go. And oh, does have a label right there. Jade. The Jade version is less money. Uh, most of the Damned Design knives, uh, they originally wanted to make them all with 154 CM or better steel. And uh, the manufacturer that they had hired to make these in China just couldn't get that steel. So they made a bunch with 14C28N and they dropped the price. This jade version, so that I can dye it, I like the jade, is only 54 US dollars. That's after your discount, 54 US bucks. Uh, we've got T8 screws on the pocket clip, right and left pocket clip, flipper right there. You know, it's a little bit of a chunky style handle. And we've got a beautiful drop point blade, full flat grind, gray wash finish. Like I said, 14C28N. There's not a lot of badging. 
but their logo's right there. I wish it was up on the flat instead of on the bevel. And, you know, I'd much prefer that. On all other knives, they've got this sort of hexagon pivot pin. You know, it might be a different size, sort of to match the knife. Again, another liner lock. And most of the knives I review are liner locks. Great lock up right there. Perfect alignment right there. And, you know, it's a flipper. Feels good in the hand. My hands are just barely in the extra large range. If you've got small men's hands, maybe even medium men's hands, you might not like how chunky this is. I don't know. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But we've got a flat slab G10, and it's got, I don't know if you can see them on here, it's got lines that follow the spine milled in. There's uh, three of them going across there, and then we've got three lines milled in here, and a little bit across there, and another tiny one there. Just adds a little bit more to the grip and its looks. Uh, we've got some skeletonizing on this thing and jumping back up here. And, you know, I like these knives. I think damn designs are doing some pretty good stuff. And uh, lock release is easy to get at. These all have ball bearings, all four of these knives. And we've got four very different knives here today that I think any one of these is a good deal. There's no junk on the table today. I like these. They, they all have, you know, pros that are different one from the other. They're very different knives. You know, thumb stud, a hole. These two are only flipper, but yeah, very, very different stuff. So hopefully there's been something here for everybody. I appreciate that you've come along with me. Again, here's a shout out to my supporters. I appreciate your help very, very much. And happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all that good stuff. May you enjoy your time with your loved ones and your friends. Bye for now. Wait a minute. Remember, cut towards your chum, not your thumb.